You're listening to the Chuck Banks Experience from the Coaching Culture and Athletics Radio Broadcast Network. Our broadcast is brought to you by Turn 2 Workshop. That's on Facebook. Check out Stan Schmidt, Turn 2 Workshop, T-U-R-N 2 Workshop on Facebook. If you'd like to be a guest, if you would like to sponsor, we are looking for other sponsors. You can email us, coachingcultureandathletics at gmail.com. That's coachingcultureandathletics at gmail.com. My name is Chuck Banks. I am the, a, a podcaster, a teacher, a coach, uh, just kind of a jack of all trades. I will not say master of none because I think I've mastered the ability to bring you quality content. We are also affiliated with Dog Pound Radio, Coaching Culture and Athletics. Check us out on YouTube, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox, and many other genres. We appreciate you. Here's Chucky. Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you to another rendition of the Chuck Banks Experiences, Episode 7. This week's uh, kind of, well, not week, all right? It's a day. It's uh it's it's September second. We're one day away from uh, celebrating a happy birthday to one of my best friends on the planet, Travis McFarland. And I, you know what? I I might even throw out a few Travis McGavis uh, stories. Probably not because uh, because he gets embarrassed about that sort of thing. And and if you wouldn't mind, follow him on Instagram, the Evolving Gar- Gardener. You know he hasn't posted squat yet, but you. Know, <laughs> Might, might get him off the snide. Anyway, uh, this week is titled, I don't know why I'm saying week, because I'm going to try to give you quality entertainment. Well, not just entertainment, but information, uh, both positive and whatever the hell else, uh, you know, I, I, I want to throw out there. I, I, I want to give you some information uh, as much as I can. I, I, I want to get, uh, you know, the Chuck Banks experience off the ground. We We will have some live guests coming up coming soon. Um, but, you know, these topics, uh, I I just feel like these topics are important to talk about. And t- tonight, uh, we're talking about outside noise. Uh, we're also talking about, uh, you know, we're, we're going to dig into the psychology of, uh, I don't know, child rearing, being a dad. So, so, uh, so we've got outside noise, being a dad, and, uh, the bullshit going on in social media talking about estrangement and how it's uh, how it's the parent's fault when um, you, you don't continuously reach out or, you know, if, if, if a child uh, totally estranges from you, that it's always your fault. So I, I would say that tonight's title is Outside Noise, Being a Dad, and Estrangement. And those are three topics uh, that, that we can look at. And you know what? We'll throw in our roadblocks from last night, right? The what we can control and what we can't control. Okay? We'll just throw that out there. I mean, there there are several things that we can look at uh, tonight that are going to be beneficial for, you know, whether you're a parent, whether you're a boss, whether you're a worker, whatever. You know? I, I mean, it's it, it goes uh, on and on and on and on and on. First thing... Outside noise, okay, and this one, uh, this one really hits home, and and it should hit home. We 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 see this as coaches. Um, we we also see this as parents. Uh, we see it in our friend groups, and like I said last night, man, birds of a feather flock together. You, you, you got to watch that sort of stuff. Outside noise. So every any organization, okay. Uh, Every, actually, every organization in the world is going to have a little bit outside noise. It's how you uh, react uh, to the haters because the haters are going to hate, right? But uh, in reality, sometimes these subtle, uh, con- like subtle, consistent digs, um, they 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 can get to a person. And, and you know, so so we're we're kind of analyzing some psychology tonight, right? Outside noise. Um, I saw it, uh, you know, as a as a head coach. I've seen it as an assistant coach. I've even seen it as a dad. Um, I, I I've seen it in the business uh, institutions that I've been involved with, uh, both uh, industry and education. 
You see it. You see it everywhere. Okay. Like for example, and we we have to look at the you know what we can control and what we can't control, right? But if you if you can you know like like if you listen to some of these uh, some of these haters out there after you put in uh, I don't know eighty ninety hours a week doing uh, you know various things because truly if you're passionate about getting something off the ground it's going to take some hours, right? If if I look at the rigmarole that uh, that is the life of Chuck Banks, I'll tell you that my brain never shuts off, and I drive my family crazy. And you know, it's the the spontaneity. Um, you want you you want to call it uh, you know not being able to control my tongue, whatever. It's it, it's something that is definitely shifting who I am. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. You you lose a football game. You're walking out, uh, you know, out of the tunnel, and uh, you're, you're you're talking to a couple of your players, and then and then someone that's not a part of the program comes in and says, "Well, how many games do you suppose you're going to win this year?" And kind of chuckles. Okay, um, that's outside noise. Now, whether we like to admit it or not. Um, the mind can, uh, you know, the mind has the power to achieve. If you're, if you want to be a physical monster, you could destroy the world right now. You, you, you could take it over because we live in such a fragile society. You know, I, I, I said what I said. We, we live in a fragile society. So if you truly want to be a dog, D A W G, not a D O G, you can do it. But, but you gotta, you, you gotta make some changes, dude. Okay, and 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 also, uh, just like last night, I was talking. You know, I I, I was talking about. You know, you're not going to take advice from somebody out there that really doesn't influence your life, right? Outside noise. You know, uh, a couple years ago, um, you know, I was trying to change the culture of a program that uh, that that was lacking in culture. Um, I was doing things, uh, you know, the, the right way. And sometimes the right way takes longer, uh, than anticipated. Okay. And, you know, there, we, we ran into some issues, you know, we, we went on a losing streak as I, I went on a losing streak as a head coach. Um, you know, kids, kids started to, uh, to leave, uh, they, they would leave practice excited and then they would come back and you could see it in their eyes that, uh, you know, there was this constant uh, information overload, uh, you know, come, coming from all angles saying, well, your coach sucks, doesn't know what he's doing. Um, you're, you guys aren't winning. And, and I'm here to tell you, man, uh, you know, as, as a high school coach, winning isn't everything. OK, it's uh, it's it's about developing uh, good young men and good young women to be the best possible people they can be on the planet. And I just want to throw that out there. Winning is not everything. Now, I hate to lose. I I hate to lose uh, more than I like winning, just being honest. But but the, but it's these outside noise, these uh these interwoven comments that cause issue. Much like uh in in any organization, right? I mean, we 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 sign uh I I don't think they call them non-disclosures, but like if you have an issue with uh, with your school district or, you know, and you work for the school district or whatever, and, and you make a negative comment on social media, I mean, you know, then, you know, you can get dinged a little bit. Uh, I don't think it's a non-disclosure agreement. It's, it's more of a gentleman's agreement stating that, you know, you're not going to be negative about your institution you work for. Now, if you have to be negative about the institution you work for, it's probably time to move on. Just just throwing that, you know, little breadcrumb out there. And 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 we all often have to have that uh that self-reflection and you know we're we have to control the controllables. Now, the biggest pile of bullshit that uh that, that I've ever seen is the grass isn't always greener on the other side of the fence. It's where you water it. That's the bit that's a pile of crap. Okay. Sometimes the grass gets poisoned and you have to move. Just you know, I, I, I'm just giving you, I'm giving you a little bit of Chuck Banks' philosophical insight on life. It's okay, man. I, I mean, you know, 
and 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 if you don't if you don't agree with me, I'm fine with that, man. I you know no no one's gonna hurt my feelings. All right, I've got a you know I've I've been abandoned a little bit. You know with the family stuff. Uh, you know I've been sick. Um, you know, I, I've been asked to resign and you know what? My life has never been better. It's never been brighter because I'm surrounding myself with a pack of, uh, individuals that truly know what it's like to become an elite person. I don't listen to the outside noise. I used to all the time, man. You know, it's it's one of those things like uh, as a head coach, uh, you know, after a big loss or whatever, you know, you shut off your social media because, you know, otherwise you want to fight everybody in, in, in the world, right? It's that victim mentality that we talked about last night. And we can control that uh, by by staying away from that a little bit. Just... Just the simple fact is, is that we need to take a deep breath and understand that it's so fragile out there, ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, you know, as soon as, the sooner we figure that out, the better. Another thing, uh, you know, as, as, as someone who is, uh, you know, has a degree in history and, uh, that believes that we should all learn from, you know, our past and within our history. I just want to. I just want to throw out this undertone, right? So, mob rule. All right. So, the United States of America was founded in 1787 with a finalized, uh, basically, draft of the United States Constitution. 1776. Uh, we we basically told uh, the UK, "Hey, you can go screw yourself. Um, we we want some freedoms. We 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 want some uh, no taxation without representation crap." Okay, 1787. Uh, you know the Constitution is officially created, and it, it was it was created on a republic. A republic uh, is different from a democracy. So if so, if you hear your politicians or you hear your friend uh, Larry down the street saying we live in a democracy, that's the biggest pile of BS I've ever heard. A republican democracy is much different. Uh, what we do is we vote people in office to become our voice. Um, to to basically work for us and and th- my how things have changed over the last uh, you know <laughs> several hundred years here. Okay, so anyway, there there is an evolution. You start out with a republic, so you you vote people into office that are going to have your best interests in mind. Okay, and then and then you have this push for democracy. Oh. You know, we're not being heard. Well, go vote. <laughs> you know, you, you want to look at the amount of people that say, I don't have time to vote. But but the, the first person to bitch down the street. I mean, come on. Uh, you, you have time to vote. So th- so then you have this thing. We don't live in a democracy, which, you know, we, we haven't since the inception of the Constitution of the United States in 1787. So I want to throw that out there. Okay. We live in a Republican democracy. So so there's this constant fight, this constant bickering, this constant battle. And maybe eventually I'll give you a little bit of a, you know, a, a government history tour, right? Uh, we, we started out kind of as a one-party system that eventually evolved into uh, what we know as the Anti-Federalist and the Federalist. Okay, the, the Federalists believed in uh, more government control. The Anti-Federalists believed in more states' rights. Does that sound familiar? Okay, because we're still a two party system. It's just changed names over the years. Right. But anyway, so lo and behold, you know, you you have these factions and and, and eventually what you see is, is you see a, uh, a republic so crumbled and so split down the middle where one side thinks that they can say whatever the hell they want. And the other side thinks that they can say whatever the hell they want. And then you're so split that you don't have time to to do the research and and investigate uh you know you know a particular candidate or whatever because it's it's my way or the highway right and and then what you eventually hit is this thing called mob rule mob rule means like this in in politics well if you don't believe the way i believe you know i hate you okay I've got to play this. <laughs> I'll play it twice. Okay. God forbid, you know, and, and again, as, uh, as a teacher and as a government instructor, I have not put a sign in my yard for president in the last four elections. Because when I did, 
um, you know, uh, either either my sign went missing or people thought I was crazy because uh, because I was given my God given right that the founding fathers created in 1787 with the United States Constitution uh, to have that freedom to vote. And, you know, I, I got so I got so caught up in that. I got so caught up, man. I, you know, I was like, come on, man. You know, we, we can vote for whoever we want and we can still be friends later on because I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that, uh, you know, the Democrats and the Republicans, they may put on a good show, uh, you know, on Fox News, CNN, Reuters, MSNBC, whatever. They may put on a pretty good show, but I can guarantee you that after they're showing themselves an anti-solidarity, they're probably playing cards in the background and laughing at all of us. Because we forgot the fundamental right of a republic, which is to vote. So this mob rule. So so here's the evolution. You start out with this republic. You know you you don't know whether or not it's going it's it's going to keep rolling. Okay, and and you're rolling along. You eventually get so split that you have this mob rule thing. Eventually, what happens is is you 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 end up with uh, an oligarchy or an autocracy. After mob rule, and we we've seen that in several countries around the world, historically speaking. If you don't know what an autocracy means, an autocracy is basically uh, this this despotic leader that rules by himself or herself. An oligarchy is a despotic ruler that's going to rule in a group of people. Okay. Well, uh, you know, we, we, we have this vision of this uh, republic, and, and I, don't know, I don't know how to break this to you, but somewhere along the lines, we became a plutocracy, which is a government ruled by and for the rich. And, you know, we've, uh, we, we didn't utilize the republic the way we should have and voted the right people in office. And when people did not do, uh, you know, or do as, uh, as you know, as, as you articulated their vision to be, we didn't vote them out of office. It's like, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's like a life sentence, man. I get elected to Congress. I'm going to be in there for 43 years or 50 years for the Senate, man. We still have a Senator in the state of Iowa. It's been in office since the 1980s. Okay. I'm just, just throwing that out there. So in, in reality, this plutocracy, this, uh, this term that's ruled by and for the rich, has shifted things. And what it's done is, is it's created an, an enormous amount of, uh, what do you call it, outside noise. And outside noise can create, um, I, I don't know whether I'm using the right word. You know, if, uh, if Mrs. Beeler listens, she might kill me. It's creating a dis- despotic nation <laughs> based on the generalities of mob rule. And much, much the same in, in like businesses, right? Outside noise. So, you know, hey, uh, I mean, have you ever had a business where you're like, uh, oh, man, you, you guys are family. And um, you guys did so well, uh, you know, working on your line that, you know, I'm going to give you 25 pizzas. Oh, shut up about your pizza, man. Now, industry, I believe, is much different than education because I believe that education is a passion and industry is about money. Okay. And and let me say that again. Education is about passion and industry is about making money. And there, there's definitely a difference between the two, but in educational institutions like industry as uh, institutions, you can have a lot of outside noise. If you have too many uh, teachers or too many administrators talking bad about their potential organization, you know, it, it, it can have a bunch of negative connotations. Now, family, family is much different in uh, what, what I've seen in the educational realm than it is industry. As long as you're a part of the right school district, as long as you're in with uh, the right generalities when it comes to that. You know, and, and, and I want to give a shout out to Fort Madison Community School District because there are so many great individuals there that, uh, that, that, have, brought, that have treated me more like family than some of my family members. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. And, 
And I tell you what, being a part of something bigger than myself, uh, being allowed to uh, to basically uh, be able to uh, be a part of the process instead of kind of the outsider looking in, it's huge. It's huge. And, you know, and, you know, is, is everything perfect? No. But uh, but again, it's that direct line of communication and knowing where you're always at is is extremely important. So back to the outside noise, you know, as as a head coach uh, after I think it was after my first full year, I was 0-9. Uh, I was 3-22 and altogether, but but I did miss three games. So I got to give Tyler Bryan a hard time and say that he's 0-3 and, and I'm only 3-19. and But yeah, he's a good buddy of mine, so so I'm not going to hammer him there. But you know, it's uh, I I get a phone call as soon as I'm driving home, and there's talk in the crowd that you know that that's probably going to be my last year. They're going to fire me, and and hell, I hadn't even gotten home yet. Outside noise, outside noise, ladies and gentlemen. My third year, you know, I I, I make the freaking playoffs. And then, and then, you know, but there was still all that outside noise. You know, there, there were people in my community, people that I considered friends that were making statements of outside noise. And, and he, you know, I, I heard even before the end of the season, even after making the playoffs, that that would probably be my last year. I heard that. Okay, outside noise. Don't don't think for a minute that uh, that that uh, business leaders or you know the, the the leaders within any organization, if there's any damn outside noise, don't think for a minute that you're not going to hear about it, or that uh, or or that what you're stating is uh, not going to come back to haunt you. Hell, I still see some of them uh, walking into Casey's here in Donaldson or, you know, at uh, Dollar General. And, you know, they, they look at me kind of nonchalant, but they know. They they know what they did. It's okay, though, because God always has that wonderful reality of putting us where we need to be when we need to be there. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's great. Birds of a feather flock together. Man, I'm not even mad. Not even mad about it. Was I mad? Oh yeah, I was really pissed off about the whole ordeal. But I'm not anymore. I'm where I need to be. I'm I'm with I'm with some dogs, D A W G that uh, you know that that have my back when I'm not in the damn room. And I hear it all the time, man. They 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 say, you know what? Uh, you know you're, you're you're doing great. You're doing this, whatever. But outside noise always comes back to haunt someone. And again, this birds of a feather flock together thing. I mean, if 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 all you want to do is uh, sit around and bitch and moan and gossip about, uh, you know, Aunt Nancy, you know, across the street, then as soon as you leave, they're going to be uh, they're going to be doing the same thing, gossiping about you when you leave. There's a lot of my friends out there. They're like, man, you know, you're 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 really getting into this. Uh, you know, you're really changing. Well, you damn right, I'm changing. I'm changing for the better. And and it's it's crazy because the more you change, the more you philosophically want to become an elite individual, the less likely that uh, some of the people that you thought were friends in your life are still going to be around. And that's okay too. Because, uh, you know, again, you, you, can't, you, you can't take anything uh, that, that someone that's not a part of your circle. You can't, you can't take that uh, and, and, and really run with it. But then there's the other side of things. You know, as, as a coach, I've, I've had parents say, man, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Philosophically, he's dumb. Okay, you know what? You poor Poor little guy, poor little gal. You know, I'm I, I'm so sorry. You know, you should you should be starting now. Was I that parent? Yes. Uh, you know what? I I called out one of one of my greatest friends in, on the planet, Mike Miller, one night, and uh, and I was pissed off because my daughter, who was an you know an, an all conference catcher, uh, was playing first base. I was wrong. I was I was friggin' wrong. And you know what? Um, got a little bit of karma back in, in, in many realities when it comes to, a, you know, becoming a head coach. I can't believe it. Uh, we, it's, it, it's, it's like, uh, as a parent, especially your first kid, man, 
especially your first kid. Um, it's like as a parent, you got to relive your entire youth over again. That's bullshit too. We should we should let our children be children and and kind of rock and roll with that. Now that that kind of leads me into this next segment, uh, psychology. Here's uh, here's something that I found on the interwebs that I that I think is pretty cool, man, uh, and and it really kind of rings home a little bit. If your child lies, you're too strict. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how many times that I was kind of a hard ass, you know, as a dad and my child would lie and I, hell, we, we, we all lie or we lied. Uh, I, I lied to my parents a few times because they were very strict, man. Um, so, so just think about that. If your child lies, you're too strict or you're not listening to understand you're listening to respond Two, your child is a coward. You always defend him or her. Coward, man, that you know. All, all I think about when I hear "coward" is uh, that Kenny Rogers song. He's a coward of the county. Great song, by the way. Three, your child steals. You did not accustom custom him or her to giving. Okay, give. I can't say that enough, man. That's something that I have I have changed over the years. You know, I used to be real stingy. I'm not stingy anymore, man. I give. Um, and, and, and definitely to my friends Four, your, your child is weak in speech. You do not talk to him or her. Think about that. Vocabulary, same thing. Five, your child is stingy. You do not share with him or her. I share everything with my kids, uh, or at least I do now. Had a little bug there sitting in the garage. Your child does not have self-confidence. You do not encourage him or her. Encouragement's a good thing. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know that, that brings up a great story. My dad, you know, I, I grew up in, in the country, and I, and I believed the United States was the greatest country on the planet when I grew up in the 80s and 90s. I just do. 70s, 80s, and 90s. Okay, so that ages me a little bit. Um, my dad said that you can do anything that you set your mind to do. Philosophically speaking, I still believe that. You know, from from a financial situation, I don't know. The American dream, and and that's something we can talk about. You know, on a later podcast. You know, is the American dream dead? <laughs> okay, so so I'm trying to remain the optimist tonight. Okay. Next one. Your child is angry all the time. You do not praise him or her. You yell. We have to get rid of that stigma, man. You know, when you wake up, are you yelling at your kids, get your ass out of bed? Come on. Come on. We got to get going here. And then when you get home, when you get home, you're like, I'm tired. Here's a phone, honey. And then, and then when they, uh, you know, when, when they're getting ready to head towards bed, you say, get to sleep. We have to get rid of that stigma. We have to get rid of that stigma. We have to change. Your child assaults others. You were violent with him or her. You know, I mean, it's 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 learn it's all learned behavior, right? Your child is weak in character. You're all you always threaten him or her. Last one for tonight, uh, when when we look at this psychological thing, is your child does not respect others. You do not lower your voice in front of him or her. Pretty important, pretty important, uh, you know, lines when you when when you look at wanna you know how how you want to raise your kids, and that's why uh, you know I, I I promote Jesus Christ, uh, my Savior, which by the way I was saved back in 1989. That's uh, that's why. Uh, you know, I, and again, I'm a broken man. I'm a sinning man, but, uh, but, uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, you know, every little experience that I experienced since I was, uh, merely just in survival mode instead of living mode. Okay. Every, every little experience I've learned from and, and I've compound, you know, it's compounded. The last thing that I want to talk about tonight is estrangement. Um, family estrangement, estrangement is, Something that uh, that I hold near and dear to my heart because I'm going through one, and uh, I read the biggest pile of crap that I had ever read online tonight, and uh, it was this huge article, 
Okay. And, and again, I'm sure it's the one sided aspect. Okay. Because every story is different. I, I, I love my kid still. I mean, and I hurt, uh, I ache on a daily basis to have just a little conversation with her. And, and I ache, um, you know, for my three grandchildren, which by the way, Orion, Owen and Ollie, I will love you forever. And, you know, I, again, it's, it's no one's fault. It's both of our faults in my opinion. But I read, I read this article stating that it's always the parent's fault if estrangement continues to happen. I still, I, I'm still under that impression that no, it's not all my fault. Okay. As, as, as the parent, no, it's not all my fault. Do I take responsibility? You're damn right. I do. Because, you know, as, as a father, um, it, I was just learning how to be a father at that point in my life. And I'll tell you what, man, I will never stop loving my children no matter what. Anyway, that's, uh, that's all I got for tonight. Uh, September 2nd, tomorrow, September 3rd, be sure to follow the evolving gardener. Travis McGavis McFarland. Uh, I think he's turning 52 years old today, so he's actually 20 days older than myself. And, uh, you know, we, we, we missed out on a great golfing opportunity this weekend. Probably not a great golfing, probably more like a laugh, right? Uh, any, anyway, I love that guy. And, uh, you know, he, he was my, one of my best buddies of all time in high school, still my, one of my best friends out there in the, in the entire planet. And I love him. Love you, Travis. Uh, tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Turn 2 Workshop, Stan Schmidt, Facebook, Turn T-U-R-N 2 Workshop. Be sure to follow that because he's got some amazing stuff that uh, that he makes on a daily basis. Help out small businesses everywhere. Follow us, uh, excuse me, follow us on Spotify, Spreaker, YouTube, I gotta think here, iHeartRadio, CastBox, and I, I don't know, man. There's like 15 different locations where you can get this podcast, but share it with people out there, especially if you're enjoying it. If you, and if you're not enjoying it, man, give us a shout out because those are amazing too. Uh, outside noise, uh, you know, I, I don't don't fall into the outside noise trap. And uh, for everybody within the Chuck Banks Experience Podcast, brought to you on the Coaching Culture and Athletics Broadcast Network, a Dog Pound affiliate. Good night.